Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome back to the workbench for another unboxing. Today I'm taking a look at the Fairy Rotodyne. This is a 172nd scale kit from Airfix, so join me as I take a look inside of this vintage kit to see what it's like. So it's Rotodyne time. This was brought back into the range, I think mostly because uh, people were asking for it. This seems to be a fairly popular kit and it was going for some ridiculous amounts on the second hand market. So now that it's come back into the range, people have had the opportunity to get their hands on it at a more reasonable price. On the front of the box then we can see the classic artwork here which is Roy Cross's work featuring the Rotodyne flying over London. Down here on the bottom right we've got a serial number of A04002V, V for vintage, and it's 172nd scale. Flipping over onto the thin edge, we have some tooling information. So being part of the Vintage Classics range, they tell us when this was originally designed and made. So the moulding tools were originally made in 1959 and the artwork was by Roy Cross in 1965. We have some information about the kit. The length overall will be 248 millimetres. The width will be 381 and there are 115 parts included in the kit. And then here we've got the artwork depicting the paint scheme that is included. So there's only one paint scheme, which is the Fairy Rotodyne prototype. Moving on a little bit further, we've got our paint color callouts from Humbrol, which are recommended that you use for to paint this particular kit. Naturally, you can use any brand that you want. And we've got a single flying hour. If you cut that coupon out and keep it, you can redeem it against more kits as long as you are a member of the Airfix Club. Alternatively, save them up and send them off to Models for Heroes so they can help do this, their charitable work. We've got a skill level of two, which Airfix tells us will be a moderately difficult kit to build, but not one of the hardest kits in the range. On the other edge, we've got some safety warning information, contact addresses for Hornby slash Airfix. And we do have a little bit more information here about the pack design. So 1959 for the tooling, 1965 for the pack. And this one dates from 2023. So this is a 2023 release, but it wasn't actually available until um, very late in 2023 slash very early 2024. I have had this on pre-order for almost a year. We have a Cartograph logo down here, which tells us that the transfers inside are going to be manufactured by Cartograph, which will be absolutely fantastic because they make some of the best transfers in the world. And then on the thin edges, it's just the same as was on the front. So let's get this out and see what we've got. So as usual, I'm going to look at the instructions first. And we have some information about the actual Rotodyne at the top. And then some tips here about washing your kit just to remove any mold release that may be on the plastic. Then we turn over the page. We've got some more information that's worth a read and a key to the different uh, symbols that you'll see during your build. And then we get straight into it. So starting off, we've got our pilot and co-pilot being glued into their chairs in the front of the cockpit. Then we can add some various other details into the cockpit area, as well as what appears to be the front landing gear needs to be glued in here as well. But it does say not to glue it in. So I'm guessing that this has some sort of play value, which was quite typical of kits designed around this era. And I imagine the landing gear could be raised or lowered to give that extra play value. But then again, how long would that last? They don't look like massive parts. Personally, I'd probably just pick to glue it in either the lowered or the raised position. We do seem to have some transfers marked out here to go inside the cockpit as well. Moving on then, we've got our fuselage halves and there are a lot of clear windows which need to be glued in from the inside. And we also have our main rotor head which needs to be assembled and then positioned inside the fuselage halves. Again, don't glue it in because it should freely rotate once you've completed it. Worth noting that there is no internal um, seating area or detail on the inside of the aircraft, which is a little bit disappointing, bearing in mind that a little bit later on, you will have the option to have the rear clamshell door open or closed. The little wings come as two parts which need to be glued together and so too do the tail surfaces. The tail surfaces, uh, again, don't glue them in if you don't want to because they are movable, which adds a little bit more play value. Personally, I'll probably just glue them in. These along with the front cockpit canopy can also be glued into place on the side of the model. And then we progress on to our engines. So this again has elements of play value. 
The props should be able to freely rotate if you assemble them correctly, and it appears that the landing gear should be able to be raised and lowered if uh, you avoid putting glue in the wrong places. Again, I think that's probably a little bit unrealistic for me, and I'll just glue it in one position. The only issue with that is that the landing gear doors don't seem to be poseable as well. So if you do have the landing gear go up and down, you will only have the landing gear doors in a open position. But I guess that was a bit of a trade off they had to make given the technology at the time. Coming down to the bottom then, we get to the doors that we were talking about earlier. Having already glued in our engine nacelles, these doors can be glued in at the back. And again, if you're careful with your glue and how you assemble it, you should have the functionality of having those doors being able to open and close. And they get glued in at the back of the aircraft. However, I'm probably just going to glue mine in the closed position because there's no internal detail. Then we've got our main rotors with the rocket tips here, which helped propel them round. And we can have our front crew door in the open position if we want to. I imagine that if you wanted to have it closed, it'd be a matter of gluing that folded up. And then we move on to our painting instructions, which are in full color. Not an overly complicated paint scheme. You've got white, for the top half of the fuselage, you've got a light grey, uh, sorry, no, it's not light grey, it's silver, it's 11 silver. So you've got your silver for the other elements here, as well as the bottom of the aircraft. And then we also need to have a number 14 French blue for your band across the side. However, I believe that this is probably a decal, it's going to be the front of your cockpit that will need to be painted in blue, but I imagine you could paint that if you wanted to. So let's talk about the decals then. So as I was correct about the transfers, the side ones are printed for you, but it would probably still be worth painting blue underneath just so that you get it in the right place. Bit of a white blemish on there. That's not coming off. So I've got a slight blemish there. That's the first one I've seen in a very long time on cartograph decals. Printing though on the whole is pretty good. We've got our cockpit decals here, which look fairly well detailed, don't they? They're not too bad. Our logos here, they're pretty nice as well. And the main text. So not that much in the way of transfers on this one, but they may present a few challenges given that these are quite large and they've got to go over quite large areas of the aircraft. A little bit annoyed about that ever so slightly slight print error there, just a white dot. Perhaps it got scuffed or maybe it didn't quite print that bit, but um, I'm sure a little dot of paint when I when I finish the aircraft will just hide that. So yeah, shouldn't expect any issues with these cartograph decals. Cartograph makes some of the best transfers out there. And sometimes the transfers inside the box are just as expensive as the plastic that goes in. And speaking of the plastic, we have a relatively large bag. So I know already that um, our friend Moz, who has another YouTube channel, definitely worth checking them out. He already did an unboxing on this particular kit and he had a small issue with the propellers. The propellers on his example were bent. So whoever put them in the bag or maybe pulled them out of the molding machine had an issue with them and they were bent, which is a shame, but he did manage to get replacements to the best of my knowledge. So I am going to look for my propellers and see how we're getting on with them. And oh dear. So my first propeller here is on the sprue or the frame and um, it's intact and it's not bent, which is a good thing to see. However, there's my other one. Can anyone spot the problem with this propeller? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. Well, it, it, it's missing a blade. Where is the blade for this propeller? Where's it gone? So let's have a look. It's not in the bag. It's not in the bag, no. It is not here. It's not there. Hmm. Well, it would seem 
that whoever bagged this particular kit, and this just goes to show I don't get any special treatment despite the fact I review models. I bought this myself. I don't get any special treatment, so I just get it off the shelf just like everybody else. It just goes to show I haven't got the actual blade. The blade is missing. There's no blade for my uh, propeller in the kit. So what's happened, I imagine, is it's come out of the molding machine, the blade has snapped off, and the worker has just picked it up and put it in the bag and not checked to see if the blade was on there. So I am missing a blade. I am a part down. I could potentially manufacture a spare blade, but when you buy a model kit, you shouldn't have to do that. So I will be sending a uh, email to customer care to try and get a replacement. So um, depending on when I make this video, we'll see if we got a replacement or not. So future Matt here, um, I take back what I said. I did actually find the, uh, the rotor blade, the prop blade. Um, when I dropped all the parts out of the bag, it's scattered across the desk. So apologies to the worker, you did put it in there. However, um, it does need gluing back on. I don't need to send an email to customer care um, because I'm just gonna glue it back on. But uh, it's a bit of a shame when you're paying that much money and the, uh, the parts, they don't, they're just, it's not, you know, you want a quality product when you get it. So a little bit annoying, but this is a problem that I can fix myself. We have our main surfaces and everything is rivet. There's loads of rivets on this. Some mold scuffs. We've got some, this is a very old tooling. So we've got loads of scuffs on there. We've got little dents. I don't think the tooling has been particularly well looked after. We've got little sink marks in a few places. The flash isn't excessive. Uh, there is a bit of flash on there. Plastic feels relatively strong, uh, not overly greasy. But yeah, I mean, the detail level is relatively good, but there are some surface blemishes. So it's, it's an old tooling that's not been particularly well looked after. The next one then. So here's our fuselage half and no detail internally. Um, again, you can see little pop marks here. I mean, this is an inside surface, so it's not really an issue. But we've got a bit of mold flash from an ejector pin mark on there. Um, it's the same on this side. Loads of scuffs on this part, which is falling off the frame. Again, loads of scuffs on here as well. I wonder if they did that to help with the bonding of the glue. Ejector pin marks pretty much everywhere. Flip over. More rivets that we can see. But again, like here, you can see there's damage to the tooling. So there's scuffs on the surface of the kit. A slightly strange texture on this one. It looks like a snake in the plastic and on that one as well. So I don't really know what that's about. If the problem is, if you want to try and fix these issues, you're going to end up removing the rivet detail. I suppose if you've got a riveting tool, it's not too hard to replace that. So fuselage sides then, detail on there is relatively nice. We've got little panels at the top here. Um, everything's pretty much of the raised variety, as was the style at the time. Lots of rivets, lots of external rivets. So if you like rivets, this is good for you. Um, but again, there's a little sink mark at the top here and some scuffs on the plastic, which is a bit of a shame, but that is probably the nature of the old tooling. Let's find the other half. And this other half here, if it'll focus, there we go, is the same kind of deal. Again, we got a few little bits and pieces at the top. That one's not as bad as the other one, I don't think. And then we got our clamshell doors, the prop that is serviceable. We have other parts here for the aircraft, which have a bit of flash on, which we'll need tidying up. Internally again, no detail. This one features some of the smaller details, such as your wheels, they're just uh, smooth moldings. Ever so slight mold misalignment on that. So there is a seam around the edge of the wheels, which will need cleaning up. Pilot figure looks okay. I've seen better figures, but that is perfectly usable. Bit of a mold seam down there, which we need cleaning up. Rotor head has some scuffs on it. We've got landing gear legs, other small details as well. And there's your crew door. This one then, we have our other pilot, other part of the rotor head. Some other small details. These ones are threatening to come off of the, of the sprue there. Flip over, we've got chairs. Quite basic in a lot of the detail, a lot of places, but there is a lot of external rivet detail. This is 
Have we already looked at this one? No, this is the second one, but I think it is just a duplicate or maybe a mirror for the other side of the aircraft. And it's the same kind of deal. We've got some scuff marks on there. That's from the ejector pins. I think the ejector pins have hit it so hard on that side that it's left a mark on this side. We do have an Airfix made in England, but it's like overlaid a number of times. I don't get that focus. Focus on that, please. Focus. Airfix made in England, but it's like overlaid it a couple of times. So I don't really know what's going on there. And then we've got our rotors, our main rotors which are okay and I have all four, which is good. So that's a success, I suppose. Let's look at the clear parts. And we have all of our side windows and our front cockpit. So the side windows are generally quite clear. Bit of flash around the edges, which will just need tidying up. But yeah, not too bad, they're, they're passable. And then our front cockpit, the panel lines are raised and they should be relatively easy to follow to uh, mask if you're going to use tape. A little bit of flash. I don't know if that's a crack or there's some sort of blemish or imperfection there, possibly a little like a bubble in my particular version, but hopefully that's just underneath the framing. So that will be painted and won't be seen. Other than that, not too bad. There are some scuffs here in the, must be in the tooling because they've, being represented they look like hairs they're like they look like hairs on the plastic but they're so uh they're, they're on it rather than being able to be brushed away so they must be scratches that are on the the tool and have been replicated in the molding but not terrible despite the fact this is what probably one of the older kits in the airfix uh inventory so i think it's probably time to wrap this one up we had a Sprue of clear plastic parts, which are of a generally acceptable quality, but there may be, you know, for, per for perfectionists, some little bit of areas that need cleaning up. We had our selection of dark grey plastic parts, which whilst they feature raised detail, raised uh, rivets throughout, they do suffer from ejector pin marks, some scuffs in the plastic, some strange uh, lumps and bumps in places, uh, a little bit of flash in, in a few areas as well, and also the issue of a mould misalignment where, particularly on the wheels, um, they're going to need cleaning up, uh, and on the figures as well, because there's a mould seam down there from the mould misalignment. We have a beautiful set of cartograph transfers, and I don't anticipate any issues with this going onto the aircraft, onto the model. However, there is a, I mean, it's tiny. It's like less than a millimeter, but it's a little white dot on the side of this one, a tiny little blemish, which is something that I don't normally see from cartograph transfers. We then have our instructions, which although are based on the vintage design, are to the usual standard from Airfix. Perhaps the uh, instructions are a little bit cluttered, but they're based on the older versions, so they just copy and paste it. However, the benefit is that the painting instructions are in full colour, which makes it so much easier to understand what you're doing. All of which comes in a very beautifully uh, artwork box from Roy Cross, which has that lovely nostalgia um, if you built one of these back in the day. I wanted one pure because it's a very interesting looking aircraft. A bit of a British aviation what could have been perhaps. I think on the whole it should build up into a, a reasonable representation of the prototype fairy rotodyne, but it is let down a little bit by some quality control issues which may need to be rectified. So I know this was a 2023 release, but I only got it this year, so 2024 in January. So it's taken a little while to get it out to the shops. And how much would you be looking at paying for this? Well, you'd be looking at handing over 20 pounds and 49 pence for this particular kit at the time I'm making this video. Given the quality control issues I've experienced in my particular one, I'm not sure it was particularly worth the amount that we've paid for it. But I think that slightly higher price is given due to the fact that we've got a relatively large set of cartograph transfers compared to other Airfix vintage kits. And we do have 115 parts included in the box. So other kits, which are normally around the six, seven, eight pound mark, they will only have about 20 or 30 kit, uh, parts inside them. Whereas this has got considerably more. And it is going to be a somewhat larger model as well.
Anyways, I think it's probably time to leave this one here. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of my review and whether my assessment of this kit was fair. As always, a quick shout out to my channel members and patrons for the extra support they give the channel. A massive thanks to these guys on screen. If you'd like to join them, take a look at the links in the description. There are other ways to help support the channel if you'd like to do so. And again, full information is below the video. The best way to support this channel for free though is by subscribing with notifications turned on so you never miss a modeling upload. Finally though, the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.